Thanks very much, and uh, thank you for coming. I, I really appreciate that. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, this, uh, the CEO and founder of this small startup. I came from Budapest, Hungary. Uh, we are really just uh, small operations. It's been the three of us full time ever since. And uh, right now we just managed to close our new funding round. So we are going to scale up to have even 10 people, which is great news actually. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's a small operation. And uh, yeah, before I get started, uh, I have first things first. So I will try to show you a lot of things. Uh, let me know if, uh, if it's too quick or, or if you don't get it. I'm, I'm happy to be interrupted and answer questions. There'll be hopefully some time for questions towards the end. So, uh, but uh, again, I'll, I'll do my best. And I would also like to get to know you a little bit. So I have a couple of questions for you. And even during the session, I will try to make you work. Uh, be warned. So uh, how many of you are data scientists? Please, hands up. Okay, roughly half of the room. How many of you have to regularly present the results of your analysis to a non-data scientist, so business people? Looks like uh, almost everybody who put their hands up in for the first question, great. Uh, how many of you, I mean, this is a sensitive one. How many of you regularly screenshot your matplotlib charts or similar charts and then just copy and paste it to PowerPoint when you do that? Mm, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people. Cool. How many of you use Streamlit regularly? Mm -hmm. Like uh, 10 people. And how many of you have heard about Visu and IPyVisu before this conference, before this session? Four people. Great. Five. Great, great. I love new crowds. Cool. So uh, let me get started. So Visu, uh, we built at Visu uh, generic chart morphing engine. Uh, we basically, so based on the research of one of my co-founders, uh, we employ a single logic uh, to describe a plethora of different types of charts. And because of this single logic, we can interpolate between any of the charts that are expressed on our engine's interface. So that's the basic of it, and that's why we can do these nice, smooth transitions uh, between, between chart types that's, uh, that's pretty unique. At least I haven't seen anything uh, like it before. And uh, so the next logical question is like, why <laughs> will you do this? What, what is the purpose of all this? So basically, we have a vision that we're working towards, which is to build a graphical user interface for data. We think that if uh, we can employ uh, animated charts and help people interact with data in a visual fashion, then it could be used for different use cases from exploration to storytelling to reporting and dashboarding, even to forecasting and planning. Now, as I said, we're a small initial operation, so we decided we need to focus, and we shifted our focus first towards storytelling because uh, uh, that's where the benefits of animations are, at least to our experience, is the most uh, uh, straightforward, are the most straightforward. So why we think animation means anything or makes sense to use? Uh, first of all, static, we think, is abstract on one sense. So, for example, these four charts show uh, different views of the same data set, but uh, without your expertise and without uh, being explained, like what is we seeing on each and every chart, making the connection between them can be rather hard. Whereas if I connect these views with animation, it becomes very intuitive. It's like no further explanation needed. Everybody understands how these views relate to one another. It's because basically we're using a different part parts of our brain uh, to decipher movement uh, than the abstract decoding uh, task of, of charts. Uh, a couple of examples of how animated transitions could be used. So like, for example, for drilling down in a, uh, like in this case, as you can see in a, in a more complex way, showing differences or uh, like uh, showing one part of a, of a stack chart and, and show if there's like one piece that, uh, that goes uh, against the trend. Uh, you, can, you can change uh, very nicely from aggregate, aggregate values to distributed values. Um, you, can, you can show change over time with the help of these uh, racing bar charts that were so popular at one point that they were banned from the Data is Beautiful subreddit. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, so, so also you can actually turn one chart into a whole story. This one shows how many smartphones different companies sold back in 2016. And, and uh, yeah, then we added uh, the, the amount of money they make on this. So just one chart shows this, uh, these leagues of companies uh, and, and, uh, and gives you this sense of magnitude uh, due to the animated transitions. So uh, how we developed this technology and how we used it, actually the core engine, this, this generic chart morpher that I told you about that we built from the ground up, is in uh, C++. Uh, we use WebAssembly to compile it in the browser. And uh, after we received our initial funding round in early 2021, we released our first open source product, which is a JavaScript library uh, that it was intended to be used, obviously, by JavaScript developers to embed uh, animated charts and, uh, in, their, in their online products. And then we shifted our focus towards uh, data scientists. We released our initial product last year in March, uh, which uh, enabled uh, everyone to use animated charts in, in Jupyter Notebook and, and similar uh, tools. And then uh, just last summer in Dublin in EuroPython 2022, I was happy to announce uh, this uh, extension of our tool called IPy Visa Story that enables you to build, present, and share animated data stories uh, right from a Jupyter Notebook or a, or a similar tool. So uh, we have a ton of integrations now, a plethora of different notebooks, uh, and uh, we are working uh, together with PyScript, with BI tool mode. But uh, most importantly, I think, uh, the integration with uh, Streamlit and, and, and lastly, Panel uh, opened up new use cases uh, for us uh, that I'm going to just showcase you a little bit. Uh, actually, uh, the panel integration is the newest among all of those. Uh, we would definitely need some people who could help us build more examples uh, using that platform because it's brilliant and I know that uh, we, can use, uh, we, can, we can showcase a lot of the capabilities that our tool has and, and hopefully uh, you can build uh, useful stuff with it. So without further ado, let's get down to coding. I will uh, go quickly through all the different iterations. So first show you IPyVisu so that you understand the logic, then a more advanced version, then the story, and then we'll get back, get down to the Streamlit version because I think that's how you can quickly understand how this is set up. Uh, on this bit.ly link, uh, you will find a repo folder um, that looks like this. Uh, there is like a friendly welcome message there, but uh, even more importantly, there are some uh, useful links that will get you to the Streamly apps that I'm going to show you and our documentation site and our Slack workspace. And there are, uh, in the notebook folder, there are some notebooks that I've prepped for you. Uh, these are partly the ones that I'm going to just show you, okay? So if you, if you want to follow along or if you want to later on uh, take a look at everything that we do here, just go to this repo. Okay, so IPyVisu basically works uh, with... Uh, can you share the link again? Yep, absolutely. It's uh, bit.ly slash visu hyphen EuroPython. Thank you. No worries. Uh, can we move forward? Cool. Uh, all righty. So the basic logic of IPyVisu is you have one method, the animate method. You call it once, you get a chart, you call it twice, uh, you will morph the initial chart to the second one. It's easy as that. Uh, the the uh, animate method has uh, three uh, arguments. Uh, sorry, I'm not a developer, so I'm, sometimes I don't use these words properly. Uh, you have to add the data to it, you configure the chart how it looks, and then you style the chart. You also have the option to fiddle with the animation options. Uh, we try to make these transitions as uh, easy to understand as possible, but sometimes you have a specific use case and you just want to fiddle with those settings as well. So for an for initial example, I'm going to use the Titanic data set. Uh, we, you can use a Pandas data frame. You can install our tool from PIP or Conda. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, I just uh, declared that the P class thing is a string. Otherwise, uh, IPyVisa would think it's a, it's a value and uh, we would end up having charts that we never intended to have. Um, so uh, yeah, that's basically it. We, we added a column of count, which is one for every passenger. And uh, so uh, I create the, the chart object, I can set the width and the height, and uh, I'm going to call the animate method right away. So I have, uh, 
the count, uh, the value that is one per passenger on the x-axis, and the sex on the y-axis. I also added the count on the label, so it appears as a label on the markers, and I added a title to the chart, and, and that's about it. So it, it was, uh, I guess, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, the default geometry is rectangle, so that's why you, you end up with a rectangular chart like, uh, like this one. And uh, as you can see, uh, IPIVIS automatically uh, summed up the count values for each of these categories. Uh, we are going to, like in the next week or so, introduce new aggregation logics so you could count the average, the minimum, the maximum, actually do the count uh, with that yourself. Uh, but, but initially it was only the, the sum logic. And then in the next phase, I'm going to just add the survived, which declares if a passenger died or survived the crash, on the x-axis and also on the color scale, resulting with a chart like this. So now we have a stacked uh, horizontal bar chart. Uh, and as you can see, the labels adapted to it. So now it's not on the right side, but in the middle of the markers. And, uh, and we have the legend that appears telling us that the blue markers show people who died and, uh, and the, the green one is the one that, who survived. Okay, and, and lastly, I'm going to just remove the survived uh, category from the x-axis and add it to the y-axis, uh, me ending up in a grouped bar chart. So we just rearranged the chart like this. There are a couple of other uh, parameters of the, of the config uh, object here. So we have the axis and the channels that you could give uh, any continuous, any values, one of those and any number of categories to. You can set the geometry, the coordinate system, you can sort uh, the, the markers, you can align them, you can add the title as you saw. I mean, we, we don't really have time to get more into it, but if I set the geometry to circle, then we get two circular elements. If I add the count, the same thing that's on the y-axis and on the label, to the size of the markers, then they would have different size. And if I switch from the Euclidean coordinates to polar, then I'll end up with a chart that doesn't have any sense. Uh, I mean, it, it still fits all the necessary requirements of a chart, but we never use it because it's so hard to read. And uh, so there were a couple of issues uh, we faced early on. One of them is that people never uh, used this kind of logic to build charts, this very generic, like adding uh, data series to axes and channels. And also, uh, you can build charts that don't make sense. Uh, you, you do want to build charts that uh, you know what you will end up with. So we introduced presets very, like, quite uh, after we, we did the initial API. And here, uh, like, for example, with a stack column chart, it works like uh, you add to the config part that, that you want to build a stack column, so you set it up right away, and then uh, you have uh, specific parameters for that type of chart. Uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Uh, and by the way, I have these playground notebooks in the repo folder. These are specifically prepared for you to just fiddle with the API and understand how it works. So uh, I'm not going to show you all the examples because I want to uh, spend more time on the stream a little bit, but here we have a data set that shows how much revenue different music formats generated in the US. I create the chart and now I'm going to use a preset, like I'm going to set that it's a bar chart and, and use those parameters. I'm going to uh, turn it into a group bar chart uh, because I want the bars to be colored differently. I add some, so this is the styling bit. I'm going to change the font family, the font size, add a new color palette, uh, change the number format, and things like that. And as you can see, everything I change when it's possible will happen in an animated fashion so that you understand what you changed. And all the settings that you added to the chart object uh, will get preserved for the next phase. And, and, and gets, uh, so you, you can count on those. And here, it, this is how easy to turn it into a bubble chart, a stacked bubble chart, um, yeah, and so on. That, that's, that's the presets. Uh, the other uh, issue that we had is like, it's very like, hard to understand what the direction here is. And, uh, and going back and rerunning cells can, can uh, mix your chart ups very badly. So that's why we introduced this IPI story thing, which introduces basically two new things, steps and slides. And uh, it's just like they are the same chart objects, but you can make the animation stop there. So if I, uh, I'm going to just quickly run this so that you understand what I'm talking about. 
uh, and, and I'm already <laughs> running a bit behind schedule. So we basically added these buttons beneath the chart that enables you to switch between the views that you generated instead of having to rerun cells and everything. So you have the presentation opportunity, you can go full screen, you can export it as an interactive HTML file with the story, with the data included, so you can just send it in an email and so on. Uh, and, and basically a, a step is, so like a slide is, is a view where I stop, and one slide can have multiple steps, as you can see on the picture, while we go through before stopping at the final step of a slide. Okay, so that's the hierarchy. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so you can obviously build uh, different, uh, yeah, we have event handlers to just uh, personalize the charts to your needs, and uh, I'm just going to run this. So a couple of, like, to, and this is how you export it. So story export to HTML is, uh, is the way you, you generate the HTML file. So now we have, like for example, this op option that splits up a stack chart and show, you can see this trend uh, one by one. The filtering is actually the zooming bit. So I just added back the defense uh, budget of the US uh, to show the filter. And here I'm going to just zoom in again with, the fil with filtering the data actually shown on the chart and just rearranging them so that uh, the viewer can compare uh, how uh, the different uh, uh, like bits uh, changed over time. All right, uh, now comes the time when I want to make you work. So, uh, but it's gonna be just uh, like two minutes of your time. Survey time, because we're working on a new API. The newest issue we had is you don't like dictionary-based approach. You can't uh, have the tab assistance in the IDE. It's harder to debug the code and everything. So we're working on now a new Pythonic API and we built a survey uh, in which you can see actually uh, one chart and then under it uh, three different versions of this, this new API. And, and we would just like to ask you uh, to pick the ones that uh, work the best for you. So uh, coming back again, it's just bit.ly slash ipyvizu hyphen API with capital API. Uh, if you don't have the time for it to fill it now, I'm just happy if you just you know, make note of this URL. And, and, but, but I'll give you a minute, okay, to, to get valved into it. And if anybody has any questions right now, I'm happy to answer while the others are filling out the survey. Yes, please. Uh, question was if it's possible to re-import the exported HTML. Uh, right now it's a one-way ticket. So uh, it's, you build the story, you save it, and then it can be just shown, shared, presented, but uh, it's, it's part of like, it's kind of like our first export format. There are others on our roadmap, so video obviously, and the ability to export it to PPT is also there. Uh, we already have a tech demo exporting this to reveal.js, which is behind slides.com, that is an online presentation tool. So, uh, but that, that's a absolutely uh, right question. Any other question we have at this moment? Alrighty. What about turning our attention to Streamlit? What do you say? Or you're still busy filling out the survey? I'll let you do that. Yep. Uh, is there any uh, way to export back and forth to Matplotly or some other Plotly or some other popular uh, Python? Um, the question was if there is a chance to export things to Matplotlib or is there any like interoperability? Uh, not right now. So we, we are thinking about it. We'd be super happy to work with uh, the Matplotlib project. Uh, the problem is that uh, we, we haven't had the resources to do that uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, uh, um, like uh, I, I just had note of I have 10 minutes left from the whole of the presentation uh, and I want to be, uh, give you some time for questions. So let's focus on the Streamlit bit, right? Okay, so Streamlit is a way to build data apps using only Python. Now on the right side you see an app and on the left side you see the code behind it. 
And uh, basically there, so first things first, I have to express a gratitude once again, and I will do that plenty of times, to Mr. Zachary Blackwood, who works at Streamlit, and who built a bidirectional component via which uh, IPyVisu could be, be get uh, well integrated into, uh, into the Streamlit. And basically, you have a new uh, object uh, called Visu chart that you want to use. You create a chart, you add some, a data frame to it, so it's pretty much the same. And then um, it's like uh, in, in Streamlit you have these controls. So for example, the ST checkbox is an input widget. It creates a checkbox that calls swap. And uh, the, the whole code here says that uh, do this. So create a chart with the cat so the category and the X and the value on the Y, and then if we call, if you click on swap, then just exchange these, and that's what happens. So basically, you just switch the chart. That that's fair, really like straightforward, uh, and that's super easy, uh, simple. And there's an output. We're calling the chart that show method, and then we just you know that's that's being shown there. Also, because it's bidirectional, you get any, some information about the value of the click bar here. So you could get value out of the the Visu component uh, where where and what you clicked. Uh, there are a couple of apps here. You get to the same app if you follow the link in the repo folder that I showed you. Another simple example is a slider, which employs actually this filtering mechanism that I mentioned. Basically, there is a slider here that says pick a year, minimum value 1973, maximum 2020. This is the default value. This is here. And there is like one animate method where uh, the filter is applied in a way that record year equals the selected year. So if I change this, then we get to a different year. And, and it's like pretty straightforward for anybody to use, I guess. Uh, if I change this to have only uh, like uh, less than a year, then it would be like up to that year. The, uh, and and I, if I rerun this app, then we'd have a lot bigger value uh, because it would include all the values from 1973 up to 1988. It's, it's that easy to, to change these kind of things. OK? And we have some styling, but that's not that very important here. Uh, uh, another functionality that Zachary kindly implemented is the drill down. Uh, it lets you just, if I click on any of the bars, uh, I'll zoom into that and drill down to a different category. So I'll, I'll drill down to that year, as easy as that. And if I click on anywhere else, I go back to the original view. You can, you can have a functionality like this. And it's, again, pretty, pretty straightforward. So it's like there is the bar clicked. So we get from the chart the marker categories year. And then when, it's, when there's if bar click none, we get back to the original view. Else, so when the bar is clicked, then we just filter to that year and rearrange the configuration of the chart. Ta-da, we drill down. It's as easy as that. Uh, we can build explorers like this one where the user can actually themselves generate different views. This is just some bogus sales data. You can switch from sales to revenue. Uh, you can uh, compare by product and region. Uh, and uh, you can also like switch to polar coordinates. Uh, you can rearrange the markers to be uh, like sorted like this, and and even the styling is available, so you can set the background color uh, very ug in a, like to, to be very ugly. Uh, it, it's it's again super super straightforward. It's like ag actually it's just connecting these uh, input widgets uh, to to certain uh, configuration objects, and then add those to. Uh, so this is basically where we say what should happen if this and that is selected, and then just build one config, and then put it to the chart. So that's about it. And lastly, the last uh, example I wanted to show you, and then we'll get down to questions, is, uh, is where you also have an explorer. It's a more bespoke one. I just uh, make it full screen so you can see it. It shows, once again, the music formats. Uh, the user can uh, select the time frame uh, via which, when it is shown. Uh, it's like you can adjust the value for inflation. You can switch from revenue to volume. Uh, you can uh, stack the things by format instead. You can add more formats. You can sort them by value, whatever. But more importantly, uh, so this is obviously something that any business, basic business user can, can do. I have the opportunity to download this story. 
as an HTML file, so download an HTML file. This is a very early implementation of this. And I have an animated data story of every analytical step that I took in the browser. This is super, super important for us because it shows the first step into a new paradigm of intertwining analysis and storytelling. So all of it is, sorry, all of it is free and open source. Hit it up, use it, come join our Slack, and let us know how it sucks, OK? <laughs> so thank you very much for your, uh, for your kind, uh, uh, yeah, for being here and, and, and heading for me, like uh, keeping with me throughout the days. Uh, there is a second survey. Sorry about that. But I have stickers that I'm happy to give you. And I'm uh, actually in the uh, OSS tables uh, right around uh, the, the food court. So you can, you can get me there. And lastly, I always make a selfie of myself in the here. So if you don't want to be on it, just don't look in the camera. You, you won't be recognizable. But I need to prove the guys back at home that I did make it to, uh, to Prague and I did make it to the, to the, to the stage. So if that's OK for you, I'm just going to ask you to say uh, Vizu. One, two, three, Vizu. I always suck at it, even though I play it for quite some time. OK, thank you very much. We still have, yeah, thank you. Good. Looks like we still have four minutes. Thanks, Peter, for a rather animated presentation or assessment. So yeah, we have uh, like four or three minutes uh, for a few questions. Uh, just for that, we have two microphones in the middle uh, here. So anyone, please come up to there, and then we can have a few questions. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. What are your thoughts on building data stories without trading code for business users? Sorry, I, I couldn't get there. Uh, what are your thoughts on building this interactive data stories without writing Python code for business users who don't know Python? Can you not use the mic for me? And I, I'll repeat the question. I'm sorry. I, maybe it's because it's facing that way, but I don't yeah. understand. What do you think of uh, it's much better. building data stories without writing Python code for business users who don't know Python? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it should be good for business users, or at least that's what we're hoping for. Uh, so if, if, that, if I understand the question correctly. Yes. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, this is what the last example is about. Uh, to, and, and this is what we're working towards. Uh, right now, we have these free and open source tools, and they work great. And, and we need feedback, and we want to make them as good as possible. Also, we started working on end user tools for Excel users that would enable them to visually fiddle with the data, just how I said in the, that's the vision that we're working towards. Uh, these animated stories, I mean, I know people who got a raise because of using IPI Visu Story, uh, presenting insights uh, for, for their, uh, yeah, for, for the managers. So yeah, it, they, they love it. Hey, um, I know what she mentioned that it's free and it's open source, and thank you for doing that. But you also said you have investors and it's free people working on it full time. So yeah. I, I was just wondering, like, how do you make money? How, how do you eat? Yeah, lucky for us, uh, we're just burning through our investors' money, but uh, that has a deadline, obviously. So these uh, tools that I'm talking about for the end users, those won't be free and open source. But everything that we build for you guys is like that, and we'll, keep, we'll stay like that. Got it, thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm just thinking about how much data can that handle, uh, because it's a dashboard. Uh, yep. And um, what exactly does Streamlit do behind the scenes? Yeah, so the question was how much data the, our thing can handle, and uh, what does Streamlit do behind the scenes? So uh, we have uh, like experiments with a couple of tens of thousands of uh, markers that appear on the chart. Uh, we, we have uh, two bottlenecks. Uh, first one is rendering. We're using the canvas right now. We plan to implement, uh, so like use OpenGL for that, and, and that would uh, sort that one out. And in terms of data management, uh, we, we could do a better job. But uh, so even with smaller data sets, you can get issues if there are too many categories uh, put on the chart in the same time, because we're actually building an n-dimensional 
uh, data cube, and that could get really big even with a small amount of data. Uh, with regards to Streamlit, uh, they are the ones providing the control, they are the ones hosting these apps, uh, and, and we, we provide the animated charting experience. As with any JavaScript developer, you can use this anywhere, so it's like we don't have a back end, it's like you download the, the package and then you can use it right away, and that nothing uh, gets back to us. Uh, everything happens in the browser. Uh, actually, the more granular the data you add to Visu, the better, uh, because uh, you know that's how you could generate the different views. So unlike other charting libraries, we don't want you to aggregate the data down to the views that you actually want to show. But like the granularity of the uh, like all that that encompasses all the views that you would or the business users would want to generate. Usually, that's pretty granular. And, and if you have any other questions, it's like our time is up. So uh, please visit me at the open source tables. I'm, I'm super happy to continue the discussion. And then thanks again for, for keeping with me. If you have three more minutes to let us know what you think about Visu and, and, uh, and, and about my presentation and how we could improve, just go to this link and, and thank you for your time and, and your, yeah, your attention. Thanks again.